Welcome to this episode of Now That's Something Good, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. Now here's your host, Sarah Good. Hey friends, welcome back. It is Sarah. And Will. Hey, we've got something really fun we're going to do for February. Will, what is a big holiday happening in the month of February? President's Day. Okay, well, it's President's Day. (laughs) It's actually Black History Month too, which that's a side note. Man, let's go out and learn some more about some of our friends this month. But there is a commercialized holiday that we'd like to focus in on, which is... Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Come on. Yes. So So serious. Now... Let's give a disclaimer here, Will. We love Valentine's Day. Not really. We're in it for love all the time. Love, friends, relationships, all the things. Right. So, but for the rest of February, we thought we love a good theme or I love a good theme. Mm-hmm. And so we thought we would talk about what the rest of the month will. Yeah. Relationships. Relationships. Every kind. All kinds. But we're going to focus in on hearing some conversations mm-hmm. with people that have been married at different benchmarks. So I want you to hang with us. So if you're listening and you're like, Sarah, Will, I'm not married. I, this is going to bore me. I don't want to listen to it. I want to encourage you, hang with us, stick with us. Good we asked coming. some really important mm-hmm. questions that you're going to hear us ask every episode really over the next three weeks that pertain to you as well. So don't tune us out. Right. Stay with us. I think you can learn a lot, whether you're single, whether you're widow, every, wherever your life placement mm-hmm. is, I think it's going to be encouragement as we talk about relationships. And even though they have a little bit of marriage focus, there's a little something in there for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. If you, I mean, you become the kind of person that you listen to and you hang out with. And so being able to hear from really mature and and awesome story kind of people that have done some great things in their life is going to be so much encouragement. So absolutely. And we're a big, big fan of, we can learn something from anybody, Mm -hmm. um, whether whatever the differences are. And so I think you're going to enjoy this. I want to encourage you though, if you are married or maybe you're dating or you're recently engaged, I want to encourage you to do this. Maybe you want to check out the episode a little bit further. We, that's great, but I would encourage you to hit pause and actually find a time to listen to this episode with your significant other. I think it's going to bring up some great discussion points, some different things that you guys can talk about and really take a moment to make your relationship a priority to focus in, ask some of the questions maybe to each other that I'm mm-hmm. asking our friends on there and just have a conversation. Yep. Will, it's what great. Would you yeah. Have? That pause button works. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Take some time, maybe make a date night, spend a little time because relationships are important. Mm -hmm. And if we don't work on them and oftentimes, sometimes the relationships that are closest to us, we kind of just think, well, they're always going to be here. We take it for granted. Mm -hmm. We take advantage. And so let's just spend a little extra time with a commercialized holiday in there, celebrating relationships and love, which is ultimately God's love for us, Christ's love for us. And we get to share that with everybody around us all Mm -hmm. the time. So today we're going to get to talk with our good friends, Josh and Katie Bynum, they've been married 20 mm-hmm. years, which guys really is a long time, long, long time. And so we're excited to hear from them. And I think you're going to really enjoy this conversation. So here we go. Here's my conversation with Josh and Katie Bynum. Hey friends, welcome back to Now That's Something Good. I am so excited to have not one guest, but two guests in the podcast studio with us today. Our good friends, Josh and Katie Bynum. How are you guys? Very good. I am good. <laughs> good. It's so fun to be with the goods today. We are so excited to have you. So we're going to be talking all about marriage, relationships, life, just all the things. How are you guys feeling about that? Great. Good. You ready to just tell us everything we want to know? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no pressure. No. <laughs> You'll be great. Just start off. I want everybody to be able to hear your voice a little bit. So why don't you guys each introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us about what fills your days and about your family a little bit. Go for Very it, Josh. Good. All right. So Josh Bynum, uh, what fills my day a lot of times is work, like yes. most people. And I work for Bear. Uh, here in St. Louis, and I enjoy getting to fill the rest of my day with family. I've been working from home since COVID started, and that's yes. really enhanced my uh, family time and yeah. opportunities with the kids. Um, we're into sports. We're into livestock animals. Yes. And so we we stay pretty busy. Now, Josh, I feel like I got to stop you here for just a second. Katie, we'll give you a sec, but... You said you fill your days with livestock animals. I feel like <laughs> you're going to need to explain that you live right here. We're in St. Charles County. If you're not local, do you live on a farm? Like you need to put some context to where you live so that people can also understand why I'm saying it's a little funny that you have livestock. Yeah. So we live in the suburbs, but we do have some acres. Okay. We have five acres and livestock's 
uh, for us is chickens. Yes. <laughs> so our boys show chickens. Love it. And we love the eggs that come from the chickens. Yes. And then we also are in the business of showing sheep. Yes. <laughs> and so that's honestly consumed a lot of our time mm-hmm. here in the in the past few weeks because we're getting ready to buy our show okay. lambs okay. for this next year. I thought and we get the- ordered new chickens. And awesome. That come chickens. via the mail, Sarah. Now, I really have an important question because I'm sure our friends listening are like, where does one order chickens? Like, how does yeah. this just, do they come in the mail? They do. They you do. can order they chickens. Come. This is, you're going to tell us a little bit about this for mm-hmm. a second. They do. Where do you order chickens from? So we order from a hatchery out of Ohio. Okay. And they literally ship them in the postal service. <laughs> that is so, And so when we show up to the postal service, to pick them up where we have a box that's chirping. I It has live on the outside. That's really important. So they make sure to get it to you quickly. Okay, this is crazy. I feel like there's going to have to be a whole other yeah. show. <laughs> now that's something good, <laughs> livestock edition. Like I feel like I'm going to have to hear. We'll, we'll try to keep it reined in, but okay, that's awesome. And Thank before you. we came here tonight, there were like 12 deer in our front yard. That's our most favorite part of where we live. Katie, that's awesome. And yeah. I know, So tell us a little bit about how you fill your days. Okay. And then you tell us, tell us about your kids and your okay. family. Sounds good. My name is Katie Bynum, and we have three kids, Brayden, 13 now, Branson will be 11 soon, and Kaylin Faith, which is four. I fill my days by being mom, <laughs> mostly, <laughs> chasing children and driving children and um, That's a full supporting job. Josh. And then I am now the vice president for Fearless Women, and that consumes a lot of my time. It's great. Yes. Yes. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do have one more question because I feel like the people listening are one know this because you talked about sheep. Would you like to tell a story about how you sometimes exercise your sheep? (laughs) And I feel like I'm going to need a picture of this to put out so everybody can see. It's kind of Is this okay to talk about? Oh. Oh. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> Never mind. They just we can't give away all our winning okay, secrets. Okay, just kidding. We won't tell. Can you really not tell? We do exercise our sheep. Okay, maybe <laughs> with uh, certain ways to build muscle. Okay, yeah. Don't tell the actual. You just yeah. Girl, okay, look. I just lots gave, of I'm exercise, sorry. Lots of walking. I lots just got of- caught off the friend list because I just about <laughs> spilled the sheep tea on what we're supposed to say. I'm sorry. Okay, no never worries, mind. No worries. No worries. This is why we just should not talk about livestock. We're just going to stick to the other stuff. This is great. This you're is already starting Sarah. off to be a great episode. Y'all are happy you're here listening you with us today. You never know what your friend Sarah may ask. You never know. You never know. I see. I found that's the first wrong question I've actually asked that people couldn't answer. There we go. It's about sheep. Cannot tell the sheep trades secrets. Okay. Let's back up here. Okay. So please tell everybody, how long have you been married? Half our lives, Sarah. That's crazy. Half our lives. We that just, is. That's yeah, right. We yeah. just celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary, December 30th. 20 mm-hmm. years. And our 40th birthday yes. back in August. During it's COVID. Kind of big, you've had a big 2019. Big. That was all in 2019? 2020. 2020. 2020. All in COVID. Year. Yes. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. that's right. Okay, I know. And Katie, you're going to do you had big birthday plans and just it had, still was great. We just had to change our plans. Had to adjust. Had to adjust. Yes. Okay, so tell me this. I want to go like way back 20 years ago or for how long did you guys date before you were married? We dated for two and a half years. Okay. Before we tied the knot. Okay. So I'm going to need to hear all the details. And I mean like <laughs> a lot of the details, but like Okay. You know, that we can fit in an hour long podcast. Yeah. So, Katie, I'm gonna ask you because okay. I feel like this will be great certain questions from both of your perspectives. Mm-hmm. How did how did you guys meet? Tell us the Yes. Josh and I went to college at West Texas AM University, which okay. was halfway in between where we both grew up, small hometowns. It's a smaller college, um, right in the center. And it was within the first few weeks of going to college that we both Everybody's going to love this. We both were out with friends that night at Country Western Dancing, because that's the only thing you get to do Midnight <laughs> at rodeo. college. At the where, Josh? Midnight Rodeo. <laughs> Midnight <Texas>. Rodeo. <laughs> yep. So good. Yes. yes. We, both, we really do. Both of us like to country dance, and we were dancing. Um, I was with a group of friends. Josh was with a group of friends, mm-hmm. and some of the friends within our friend groups knew each other. Okay. And Josh saw me from a distance. And what did you say, Josh? Well, I was actually dancing with someone else. And yeah. I saw Katie and I pointed at her and said, I want to dance with you. 
<gasps> yeah, really Whoa. loud. And I was very scared. <laughs> and I went back to my friend group <laughs> and said, what is going on? Who's that crazy guy? Who's that crazy Fortunately, guy? Fortunately, yeah. she was standing next to a guy that knew me. Uh-huh. And so when she did get a little bit scared, he was like, <laughs> He's, he's okay. an okay guy. He's okay. Mm-hmm. He's an okay guy. So yeah. did you end up dancing? Did you we end up did. dancing with him? We did. So was this like love at first dance? You like what it. was the was it really? I'm very well, intrigued by this. Honestly, it was pretty close to that because it was just the very next week that I was back at the midnight rodeo. Okay. And Katie wasn't. Uh-oh. <laughs> and it's not far from our university campus, and so lots of people will drive over yeah. they'll they may drive home in a different car where somebody else will okay. just so happen that i ended up driving home with someone else okay and of the female persuasion yeah but there was multiple people there josh you cannot leave out details on this story okay you know i told you we need the real details here and so what what's funny about it is there's hundreds of people at this dance hall okay but on the way on the way back i found out that the person driving the car was actually katie's roommate Uh uh-oh driving my car and was driving katie's car okay and the reason Katie wasn't there is she was getting ready the next day to plan a trip to San Angelo. Okay. And so knowing that she was planning a trip, I asked the lady to take, Josh with the take car. her car to a gas station Aww. and I filled her car up with gas. Wow. This I is know. all before like a real first date or oh, anything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is good. I so I Be taking car. notes, people. This is a good stuff. <laughs> this is a good first move, Josh. This is going in your favor. And then the next week was homecoming week, which is always a big week at okay. universities. Mm-hmm. And we were both, our dorms were a part of building the bonfire. Okay. And our dorm nights went on the same night. And he found me again, and we sat and we talked all night long oh, at the bonfire. We laid, we laid <laughs> in the it. bed of my truck, looking up at the stars, and literally talked all oh, night, wow. just about mm-hmm. who we were. And and then he conveniently lost his algebra book, and he mm. needed to borrow mine, mm. and I became his algebra tutor. And yeah, from it then on, algebra. Though. It didn't Is that help. algebra tutor like in quotations? <laughs> <laughs> like, what are we? Probably. This is hard when people can't see the facial stuff. They can only hear. Yep. So I got to ask a question. I got actually a couple of follow-up questions. Okay. Do you remember what the dan- the song was that your first dance was to? Is there any chance you remember? No, but we're big George Strait fans. I okay, as you say. Okay. So there's a good chance it was George Strait. Okay, I love it. And then I feel like the people listening also need to know something because... The two, it's two step, right? Yes. Two step. Two the step. Texas the, two step. Texas yeah. two step. I, which I've, I know nothing about. Mm-hmm. You, did you guys want? There's something more about this dancing situation. I feel like you need to share with all of the people. So we actually had an elective, okay, that we took in college, and we both decided to sign up for Western and dance. Only, only in Texas, I feel yes. like this is where <laughs> you would have this elective. So we right? took a, a two step Western dance class in college. We even together. learned how to like do the flips and everything. Yeah. Do you guys have a video? We're going to have to show this, guys, because I forgot about this part of the story because we've known each other. I'm, we've gotten to know Will and I've gotten to know the Bynums for, I mean, a while now. And we used to do these things, these events called a barn bash, and they would teach people how to do the two-step. It was one of my favorite things. And I remember being shocked that I was like, it, it's, they're, they're good at this. People. Yeah, I don't look like I can dance. We might have to get put a video <laughs> together, Sarah. Yeah, we'll have to show something. Maybe we'll just get them to do a little bit of it before they leave the podcast studio <laughs> and just put it out there. It'll be a... Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows, yeah. Okay, so then just tell us what happened after that. You guys started did immediately after the long night talk and the bonfire. Did he that took just me on start? our first date. Okay. Oh, except for he asked me to go on a date, and then I remembered I had a uh, flag football game I was playing in, and okay. he told in him I mural. couldn't because I was playing flag football, and he thought I was lying I to him. I just took it as an excuse because I'm ready to take this girl out for a steak, and she says, <laughs> no, serious, I people. have a flag football game. And I really did. So then he said, well, can we go after? And we did. Okay. We did. That was a good compromise. That was a good right from the start relationship. So our our first date was to the Outback Steakhouse in (laughs) Amarillo. And I do remember a conversation. We're talking over 20 years ago, but I do remember a conversation that we had because. On cutting, how to cut your steak? Yeah. Yeah. I I was (laughs) like, so do you cut your steak? This is great. Do you take one bite off and then eat it? Or do you cut up your whole steak and then start eating? Huh. I cut up so what, bite what's per the bite answer? because you don't want your steak to get you don't cold, want to get Sarah. Cold. I, yeah. Yes. Okay. 
understanding. Will's giving <laughs> thumbs up behind you because he's partly laughing because in our house, I grew up, this is going to sound so bad, but my dad <laughs> always cut steak for me because I could, like, it hurt my, I can't cut a knife right. It's a whole, it's a thing. So that's why he's laughing because all my steak would be cut up. But now I cut it the proper way and do it a bite at a time. I've grown yeah. up people. It's bite fine. at a time. So, so did you cut all of your steak at once? Did you do this differently? No. I do. I do one at a time. Okay, so you were just checking. This yeah. was like basically. It a, was a test. I. <laughs> good job, you passed, Katie. This is. I know. These are important things. So okay, so something mm-hmm. happened between dating and getting married, and I want to hear in a second. So just start thinking, even though as I ask this other question, I want to hear about the proposal story because I feel like okay, there needs to be a story. Mm-hmm. But Josh, I'm gonna ask you how. How did you know Katie was like really? The one, like you're like, I want to spend my life with her. I'm, this is it. I want her to have my kids. We're gonna go twenty plus years. This is my girl. That's a really good question, and I, I think that you know, as Katie and I got to know each other more, yeah. and as we got to experience some fun things together, we went snow skiing and stayed with my aunt and uncle um, for a trip. We had a lot of heart to hearts with just yeah. how I, you know, where my perspectives are around life. And at some point, I remember in my apartment, Katie was fixing spaghetti. <laughs> and I remember telling her, I was like, you know what? I'm ready to do this. Like, I'm ready to get married. Okay. And I'm just, you just tell me when. Wow. And that was big, Sarah. It was. was big. It was. But I, I, I think. You know, Katie and I both had been in long-term relationships okay. in high school. Okay. And I think that, you know, once our conversations were smooth, we had a lot of fun together. We had a lot of interests. Yeah. And I could see my life with her. That's cool. And I've kind of got a face for radio, so that's why I like this doing this podcast. But my <laughs> wife is beautiful. <laughs> that's just... And that's just part of what... I, that's <laughs> just... <for> radio. <laughs> Stop it. But that's just part of what attracted me to her. She's that's, she's a great person, and we had a lot of things in common. And I could have I could see my life with her. That's great, Katie. What about you? Mm-hmm. What was it about Josh, or what were you that was like okay, my dance moves? You're da- <laughs> well, <laughs> and his boldness, and I want to dance with you. That's Josh good. is very persistent. Um, we did go through like you know trials, just relationships, yep. trying to figure each other out. But he continually pursued me well, and we talked a lot about things before getting married. I knew that was a big deal, but yeah. We both say a lot that we were born older, yeah. um, mm-hmm. and and we have always felt that way. We are the oldest, both of us, of our siblings, and um, always felt just a little more mature because we got we got engaged when we were nineteen. Yeah. Were you okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then married when we were twenty. And um, Josh's parents thought that was great and beautiful, and no surprises. Mine were a little surprised. Yeah. Um, but I remember when I told my mom, like he is the one, mm-hmm. um, and I knew that. Like I just knew. After a year and a half of dating, I, I knew he was the one. Like, yeah. I had prayed and had qualities in mind, and he had all of those qualities on my list that I had. I'm a one Enneagram, so I knew what I wanted, and he yes. had all of those qualities, and he followed the Lord and knew Jesus, and that was number one, and then he loved me very well, and he still loves me very well. So mm-hmm. That's good. That's important. It is important. So, Josh, tell me the proposal story. Like, Was this something that you— thought about like a while was this a a planned out like a big thing behind the scenes or yeah so there was some planning involved i would i mean it there it wasn't uh really spontaneous right. i had planned out a little bit so yeah. in my hometown of spearman texas we have a a lake okay about 15 miles outside of town and i remember one night it was in may mhm and I had the ring. I had the ring for about a month before I actually did the proposal. Okay, so I got to ask you a ring question. Did you pick this out all by yourself? Did Katie give you like? Did you know? Th- did she know about it? Did so you give? We, I gave suggestions. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. As one does. Yeah. And I would say the suggestions were more on the. Do you like a princess cut? Do you like this? Yes. Whatever mm-hmm. other types of cuts yeah. there are. But who yeah, would have known there were so many cuts of a diamond? Print. Yeah. Yeah. So you go looking. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but I did pick it out on my mm-hmm. own. And so this one night in May, I decided that I was going to take her out to the to the lake. Okay. And we went out to the lake and I actually had her read 1 Corinthians. Mm-hmm. And so she read it. 
and I had some strawberries and mm-hmm. fruit and yep. a little picnic basket or whatever. And nice. then I got on one meme and Aww. asked her to marry me. And you said, What did I say? We're getting married. <laughs> Yeah, just like that. I love it. I love it. Did you cry, Katie? I'm sh- <laughs> I only if anyone knows me, they know. Of course I cried. I love it. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, it was special. Okay, so that was in May, and then just that next December, yeah. got yeah. married. Just give me a couple, Katie, like wedding details, because this is important. I mean... What's your dress look like? What was okay. it? Church? Not church? Okay, just tell me. We got married in the church that I grew up in. Okay. And the same pastor that baptized me married me, mm-hmm. which was beautiful. It turned out to be a snowstorm weekend. Seven so inches of snow. Oh, gosh. A lot of Josh's family and friends got stranded and did oh, not get to make no. it, which was okay. super sad. Yeah. Um, but there was a point where I had to walk outside and had to put on like a jacket because it's snowing outside. It was beautiful. Mm-hmm. And... Um, we did have a dance. We had it actually the night before. Nice. And we had just a wonderful wedding. It was beautiful. I think one of the things at the rehearsal dinner before the dance that was something that I'll never forget is my dad actually stood up and shared with everyone and shared specifically talking to Katie that since the day I was born, Mm -hmm. they have been praying Mm -hmm. for my spouse. Yes, School. I cried then. Yeah. <laughs> and think think about that. Yeah, that's huge. That's a lot. Yeah. To be praying mm-hmm. for your kids and praying for their for their spouse. Yeah. For all those years and then to be right at the point where I'm a, mm-hmm. 24 hours away from marrying the girl that right. they've been right. praying for was really special. So that's we've been really doing cool. the same for our kids. I was just saying, Katie, for their make spouses. A, yes. Make a plug. Tell our friends listening why they should be doing that if they've got kids or they should put that back yeah. for when they because the Lord hears your prayers. He yeah. does. And we do just, we pray for a godly spouse that is exactly created for the three children we have to yeah. be the right one that they would come along and get to marry. So good. Mm-hmm. I love good. it. So the first place you live, tell me about that apartment, house, where did you guys live? Yeah. So we were still in... <laughs> These are important details. We were, no, People want yeah. to know this stuff. We were still in undergraduate school. <laughs> yep. Okay. And so... <laughs> We moved into the one bedroom apartment that I had. And one of the yeah. funny stories about that apartment is when Katie's mom and dad came to visit us, they okay. walked into our one bedroom apartment and her dad was like, Well, this is a lot bigger this than is one really room. Nice. This it's is pretty nice. And I'm like, Well, it's a one bedroom apartment. But yeah. He thought it was going to be just like one room. <laughs> oh, like a studio <laughs> yes. apartment. Okay, okay. So and we, then we upgraded yeah, to a two we, bedroom. We upgraded to okay. a downstairs two bedroom apartment. And then big stuff happened. We graduated from college yeah. and felt God calling Josh to go to graduate school okay. at Texas A&M University, which was a nine-hour drive from where we were currently living, wow. so nine hours from all of our family. Okay. And that was a huge decision that we walked through. Um, mm-hmm. Lots of tears shed about that. Yeah. Just, I, um, we both are very close with our families. We love our yeah. families and get along very well. And so just feeling the call to move away from them. But what we learned during that was God really drew us to one another. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really important in a marriage that you learn how to do life together with your spouse yeah. without the family. Um, and, and friends. And, and yeah. yeah, it was, yeah. This was just us. We, we moved, had started really nine hours over. away yeah. and wow. started over. Um, and we'd been married just about a year when we moved. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we lived in that place in College Station for 10 years. Six years, yeah. O- 02 to 08. Okay. Okay. There yeah. you go. And then that's when you moved here to St. Louis area. No. So no, we no. lived there, and Josh and I both did graduate work. Okay. And um, had our first child there. Okay. And really, we found a great church to plug in there and a beautiful friend group and did life together with a lot of people mm-hmm. there, and it was a great time of our lives. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, And we had been married for seven years before we had our first child. That was hard. (laughs) We loved our life together, just the two of us, and found out we were very selfish people. And then we had a child, and it was hard to have a child after being married for seven years. Okay, Um, these are good things. So can I ask, was it intentional to wait that long to have kids? It was. It was. was. We were in school, and it took a lot of our time and consumed us. And we really, like... I had to convince Josh it was time to have a child, and God yeah. had to convince Josh because yeah. he loved our life, just he and I. And we had a lot of fun well, together, I mean, we and we were... just got to do what we wanted to do. And Yeah, and... we wanted to road trip tomorrow 
back to see mm-hmm. family. We could. You Nothing could was go. holding us yeah, back. Yeah. We had season tickets to watch the Aggies play football. <laughs> I mean, it was, we just... Had a lot of fun. Had fun. Yeah, yes. we really did. We still had and your life fun totally together. changes when it you does. put a little person in it. it who's so, Katie, you actually said something about selfishness. Like this mm-hmm. was hard, and this was a question that somebody actually asked about and said, "I don't think people talk about in marriage how hard it is to like put aside your own." I mean, it's very hard when you put two lives together. It's you see all of the selfish tendencies that come out. You guys just talk about that. Like how yeah. how did you work That's through that? Good. What did you see? That's hard. It is so true because we are born as selfish people, me, me, me people. Yeah. And so it truly is, I believe, a choice that you have to make every day to try to give to others and know that once you get married, you have committed to that. Right. And so right. ask God to help you for help to give towards that other person and um, less of ourselves and more of them. Isn't that what God calls us to do anyways, to lay down ourselves and... Yeah to give. So. Yeah, and I, I would say, you know, Ephesians 5:25 says a very specific command to husbands and it says husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up. And so that's the ultimate act of not being selfish. Yeah. And that's what he calls us to do is not, you know, set aside yourself and really mm-hmm. pour um, as much as you can into into helping and supporting your wife. It's good. So kind of along those lines, I feel like this is going to make you think a second. Do you remember what one of your first or second like big arguments or point of tension would be in your marriage? Yes. Is it something that you're willing to share? (laughs) I'm waiting to hear what she says because I don't... I love that she was very active. She didn't need any Uh, time. She knew, Josh, I don't know what she's about ready to say. So. remember like how far into our marriage we were. It wasn't that far. I'm trying to picture it. I think it was our two bedroom apartment. So (laughs) maybe we'd been married six months or a year. I don't know. Anyways, I kept noticing that boxer shorts were left on the bathroom floor like every day. And there was a pair and another pair and another pair. And I was finally like, I'm just going to leave them there until he runs out of boxer shorts. I mean, the laundry baskets are right there. And he ran out. And then he realized he should start picking them up. If they would just make it to the laundry basket, I would wash them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. That's fair enough. That's all I remember Do you remember about that, that, Josh? I, I don't remember that, but I can see myself doing that. I so I, see I, I, I definitely, fight, uh, but... I'm sure that happened. Do yeah. you remember a fight or something that was just maybe new about living, not being on your yeah. own anymore and adjusting to having to live with somebody I think somebody you else. should talk about our communication styles initially. And this was like in dating and yeah, let's what talk about you this. would do versus what I would do and how we finally figured out how to come together. Yeah, is this, this is a good, this is a good one because I think, you know, communication is so key yeah. in any relationship. Yes. And a lot of it can come from like how you grew up. Yes. And this is a definite instance of that. Okay. Yeah. That's good. And... When I the, when I grew up, I grew up in a very open communication with my mom and dad. I would tell, and I'll, honestly, I would sometimes tell my dad things before I would tell my friends or okay. wouldn't tell my friends. Okay. And so I I just had that special relationship that I was open in communication. Yeah. And so when Katie and I would want to, you know, we were needing to discuss something, it was very easy for me to just say, well, let's just talk about it. Yeah, you want to talk about everything, and all the details. Let's talk about it. <laughs> now, or, right now. Or maybe maybe in a, in a quicker version of this is when I would come home from school or from work and Katie mm-hmm. asked me about my day, I'm like, well, this morning on my way in, and, that, and then I would just go throughout my day. Yeah. And then I would say, so Katie, how was your day? And, well, it was good. <laughs> Katie no, just wanted well, the well, cliff note version, and you. Well, you know, it's true. Let's take it's another true. step here. What else happened? Okay, I might on? need to say though, Josh and I actually play like opposite roles sometimes as are played in a marriage. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes, like the girl is the one that's going to give all the details. It's mm-hmm. opposite in our relationship, that's and good. there Talk are about a that, few cause... like that. But okay, yeah. let's finish the story first about. So then, like we realized, I needed a few minutes to process things before I was ready to sit down and talk and share all the details. And that definitely yeah. came from my upbringing. Uh, my mom and dad aren't just big, huge communicators. Right. They'll work through things, but it's behind closed doors, and it's very little talking. Okay. And so I grew up like that. We had to learn to compromise um, mm-hmm. and him do a little less talking and me do a little more talking. <laughs> and we're still like that to this day. But... Yeah. 
So how did you figure that out? Can you like tell, because I think mm-hmm. that is probably something that is very common for a lot of people listening, yes. whether they're in a marriage relationship or whether they're dating or yeah. just a friend. Or friendships. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It happens across the board. Just, but how did you guys have that conversation to now go, hey, we know this instead of letting it continue to be a point of tension and frustration mm-hmm. and really hard things. I, do you guys remember how did that happen? Yeah, I or? think it, it calls for you to be vulnerable mm-hmm. and really have this heart to heart discussion around hey this re- whenever you shut off yeah it really hurts me because i think mm-hmm. you know that you you don't want to talk about this mm-hmm. and then for her she's like well you know i'd love to talk about it but i can't right now I need you not know, in I, a state of mind. I need to pray about right. it and think through it yeah. before I can really sit down. And I can be talk a, about it tomorrow, mm-hmm. and it's it's the recognition, it's the awareness, it's the openness and the vulnerability to that that yeah. I think draws you together as a couple. It's good, and also helps bring the the compromise that Katie was mentioning earlier. And I would say, like, we're trying to learn that right now with our kids, mm-hmm. just how to help them learn how to communicate where we have one that'll run out screaming and another that wants to sit and talk forever. So one of each of us <laughs> yeah. try to help them do the same. I can't remember how many years it was into our marriage, but we come across the love language book. Yes. And that really helped us understand can where you, mm-hmm. we're coming from. Yeah, talk a little bit about what that is if somebody doesn't know what sure. it is, and we'll put it in the show notes so they can find it. But the Five Love Languages by, is it Gary Chapman? Yes. Yep. Yes, and it is just ways that you can better love one another that we're kind of all organized into these five different categories. And so, for instance, Josh is a words of affirmation, okay. which means 100%. he loves for me to fill him up. And they t- it talks about a love tank. You yeah. all have this love tank. And he responds best if I give him praises or things that... He he does well, and that truly fills his love tank. Yeah. Compliments mean something to me. Yes. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So therefore, since that is what he is, he likes to give that to me, and that is generally not me. Mm-hmm. So he has to work to figure out the things that are me, and I am complicated. I am fearfully <laughs> and wonderfully made, as the Bible says, and I need all five love languages. I need all five. In rotating degrees, yes. depending on the day yes. of the month, it may or may not. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. So Josh, so, how have you figured that out then? Yeah. <laughs> Because I think a lot of, okay, let's be fair. And we're not trying to stereotype people because sure. we are all wonderfully complex. God yeah. has made us that way. There's no one size fits all between male, female. I mean, just, we're, but there are some things. So, and women across the board, even if Josh, you were the more of the talker, women usually get pegged to be a little more just kind of all over the place. And one day we might want one thing and the next day we want something else. And we're not really, we expect you just to read our minds. Mm -hmm. So how did you navigate that, Josh, when you're trying to figure out like, woman, yesterday you wanted words of affirmations, today you want a gift, tomorrow you want something. How am I supposed to handle this? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the big ones for Katie is acts of service. And you have to think about some of the things that you can do around the house, Mm -hmm. like making sure that the sink's clean with the dishes or those types of things and not think of them as a chore Mm. or, you know, I really don't want to do this, but think about it as this is an act of love in Katie's eyes because she sees it as an act of service and that shows her that I love her. That's good. One of the things I think we learned early in our marriage was, um, were we mentoring couples maybe? Mm -hmm. And they talked about studying your partner. Mm -hmm. So really like um, getting to know them, watching the things they do, listen to them talk uh, and trying to figure them out so that you can help pour into them and love them the best possible way. So study your children, study your partner, study your friends, figure out what they, what they like and don't Mm -hmm. like, and then try to follow through with that. See what you can do to help. That's good. Hey friends, interrupting this conversation for just a moment to tell you about something fun and good. We are going to take over Fridays as something good Fridays. And I want you to participate and join with us over on Facebook and Instagram. We're going to be taking Fridays to just share some good with everyone around us. So this is what I want to ask you to do this coming Friday. Would you make a post? Would you make an Insta story? You can share whatever, but would you just share something good that's happened in your life? This last week, I shared about how one of my favorite worship songs popped up. It can be anything, just something good that's brought Brought you a little joy to your day. And this is what I want you to do. Tag, now that's something good in it, or use the hashtag something good Friday so we can find it. So two things. One, if you share it, it's going to bring some good to everyone around us, which hello, everybody could use a little extra good in their life. So do that. 
Second, you might get randomly selected by Will and I, and we might send you a piece of happy mail, which who wouldn't like some something good happy mail? So we're going to repost a lot of those on our accounts too, so we can just spread the something good all over the interweb and help shine some bright lights and sometimes a chaotic and heavy space. So make a post, share something with us, use hashtag something good Friday and make sure to tag at now that's something good so we can share in a lot of good together. You with me? We can do it this Friday. Let's see your post. So here we go back to my conversation with Josh and Katie. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's talk about kids. <laughs> so kids have a way of drastically changing your life yes. and your marriage. Mm-hmm. Do you just want to share with us like how, what was some of the learning curve with that for you guys? How have you learned to navigate still working on, still studying each other in some way, shape or mm-hmm. form mm-hmm. while you have one, mm-hmm. two, three kids mm-hmm. and life is crazy? Mm-hmm. Yes. We do in our marriage, we try to prioritize date nights okay. because we know we need some time by ourselves. And and that's tricky for us because we have no family in the area and we've never yeah. lived near family. And so we do budget for like a babysitter. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we do try to plan a couple's trip yearly if possible, um, just to get away and recoup and refresh and retalk and rekindle love again once a year. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the big things Can we I, like to do. Let me ask you one yeah. thing, because I think this is a big thing, because I know Will uh-huh. I experienced that early on. Um, and you guys are big into financial Dave Ramsey, all this stuff. Yes. What would you tell people if they're like, Hey, we don't have family around. Mm-hmm. We don't have a lot of extra money mm-hmm. to either do a couple's trip or even like a weekly or monthly date night. What's some just creative mm-hmm. ideas or things you would share or encourage along those lines? Put the kids to bed early mm-hmm. so you, and make some intentional time to be alone, mm-hmm. just you two, because yeah. you can do that for free. And That's true. And spend it talking instead of watching TV or something like that, playing a game or something fun. What else? Yeah, I think Katie said the key word. It's being intentional Mm -hmm. because it won't happen on accident. I can assure you quality time with your spouse with kids in the house Mm -hmm. will not happen Mm -hmm. on accident. Mm -hmm. You have to be intentional and you have to even plan ahead and think about, well, what does our next weekend look like? Could we put the kids to bed early and watch a movie together or play a board, you know? Whatever it may be, but it's it's being intentional. Some people trade off babysitters with a friend um, yeah. so that you can each month have someone just swap mm-hmm. with a friend sitters so you can go instead of having to pay for a sitter. Or But you have to budget. You have to plan. You could probably... You know, not eat out or not go to Starbucks for a month and <laughs> yeah. get a babysitter save on money. that. Save yes. money that way. Yep. Okay, that's good. So what else have you just learned with having kids, how mm-hmm. to prioritize still each other, yourselves individually, but also take care of three very fun, <laughs> but demanding little yeah. people. Yeah, I think the part of it is me recognizing that unless I plan for it, I won't get one-on-one time individual with my kids. And it's also a, a benefit to Katie because she's around the kids more than I am during the day is making sure that I can help her out by taking one of the kids with me if I'm going to Rural King or yeah. wherever I'm headed yeah, and get the one-on-one time with them and then also you know, help by not having them be around Katie all the time. That's good. Okay, so I want to talk about unmet expectations because I feel like expectations in a marriage is kind of like how you talked about, Katie, that we kind of take on what we grew up with Mm -hmm. as just kind of what should be or normal. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of life in relationships and work Mm -hmm. just across the board happens when we've got expectations in our head Mm -hmm. and then the other person who cannot read our minds, even though we think they should, does not meet those expectations. And it leads to a lot of just Mm -hmm. either internal Anger, yeah. upsetness, just yeah. what discomfort, all that stuff. What have you guys done? Can you maybe give an example of maybe something that has been an unmet expectation that you guys have had to talk through? Can you think of it? Does anything come to mind? I, I think know, that's kinda... huge, just what you said, like the communication part of it. Because yeah. we expect, especially after you've been married 20 years, for them to read your mind, and they really still can't. Like we do some weird things where we can we we do read each other's mind a lot, yeah. but as things come up, it's still just that verbalizing what you really need or want, right. or um, he's generally more than willing to do it. 
if I tell him. If I know uh, about but it. But he, he, ladies and men are so different that yeah. um, we don't see things the same way. So just the open communication and talking. And when you are feeling anger or something burning inside of you, to talk about it instead of erupting because normally they don't know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think... The expectations piece is huge because you've heard me say this before, Sarah, but disappointment is expectations minus reality. So good. Yes. And how am I to know what the expectation is if I haven't heard it or you don't tell me? And so I, I think right. that's a good answer, Katie, this communication piece of, of if you have that expectation, please let me know that that mm-hmm. is the expectation yeah. so that I don't fall short in what you're expecting and then it ends in disappointment. Right. Right. And usually we see, right, the most ways that happens is, um, I'll start with the easier ones. It happens <laughs> with finances. Yes. It happens with the div- like dividing of like just responsibilities. Yes. And then if we can just go there, it happens usually with sexual relations. And just That's all true. that stuff, like yeah. intimacy, yeah. all that stuff happens. Yeah. Um, and if you don't talk about it. So how mm-hmm. do you guys, I'm not going to ask you about the intimacy part. We'll just, I, this will keep this <laughs> G-rated. Talk about so, it too. I'm going to say, but, you just well, need to talk about it. For well, now. let's go here for just a second because that is a big piece. And I was reading something earlier today that said, this was actually shocking to me that a lot of marriages will make it to 19 years, but you guys are really in the thick of, right, where you've had three kids. Mm -hmm. So if a lot of people, you've made it that long, but you probably have prioritized work. Um, Kids can sometimes take a higher priority than marriages more often than not. And so for a lot of reasons, things just kind of shift and change and people don't seem to make it past that mark. Or they wake Mm -hmm. up one day and they're like, we don't know each other. We've been living, we've just been coexisting. We've not had a relationship. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm kind of asking a lot of questions in that, but maybe talk about how you guys have worked to just not coexist together, but to really be a team. Mm -hmm. And then I do think there's something in marriage that just, we don't often want to talk about the physical part of things Mm -hmm. and it's important. And so Mm -hmm. whatever you guys feel comfortable with, I know I just asked you two big questions. So start with the, how do you work on being a team and not just coexisting? You need to find someone that you truly enjoy to be with. Mm -hmm. Like you need to be friends Mm -hmm. and we are friends Mm -hmm. and you need to have some common hobbies. Good. That you can do together and really have fun together doing those. And we have found those things along the way um, that we really do enjoy doing. For instance, we both like to fish. Yes. And it is a blessing to our entire family. We all go fishing together. We yep. like to um, we like to do our show animals together. Yeah. So find some common things you like to do together. Um, and then you want to elaborate on any of that? No, I, I would agree with you. I think having a wife that fishes with you is about <laughs> as good as it gets. That's a good <laughs> You did well, Josh. That's good. Um, but then just expectations again. Um, you are going to come into a marriage expecting different things, and our world generally tells us it is different than what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. And so, again, mm-hmm. talk about it as hard yeah. as it is to talk yeah. about the S word. You need to talk about it because yeah. men and different expect it differently. Yes. Men and women, it looks different for them. And so really learning to figure out what is best for both of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and maybe I'll take a plug here and say that don't have an expectation that mm-hmm. things will change just because you put a ring on it. Mm-hmm. That's a that's just good. just thinking. Well, you know, we don't communicate now, but if I'm his wife, then mm-hmm. yeah, we'll communicate. He'll want to communicate with his wife. No, it won't change. All of the things that we're talking around about ex- what's your expectation around yeah. raising kids and how many kids do you want and what's, you know, how do we handle finances and how do we handle discipline with kids yeah. and how do we, yeah. you know, Those are, are we going to move away from fam- Those are conversations that need to be had before yeah. you get married. Before you yeah. put a ring on it That's because good. it won't. Did you guys have somebody change. do like marriage counseling with we you did. guys? We did. Yeah. Okay. That's a fun story though. Just, it, it does show you just God truly did bring us together because we went and we had, it's actually told in our wedding video. So we just got mm-hmm. to hear it again, yep. but we go and we sit in the pastor's office and he gives us a test to take and he sends us to two separate rooms. And he says that I finished 30 minutes earlier than Josh <laughs> yeah. and then came back and we were 90 something percent on our answers. Every of, category. Which is kind of scary. Wow. He said he never gets on that closely alike, but it just shows that like our upbringing was very similar for a lot of, and and it was based on God. And so, Mm -hmm. um, but we had talked about children. So I asked, you know, how many children are you going to have finances, all the different things. And we had talked about it before we went into that, before we circled all the answers. So kind of a cool story, um, just how God does bring 
like people together. That is really cool. And so I think for those of you listening who are maybe <laughs> not, maybe you're in a dating relationship, maybe you're recently engaged or maybe think about it. I think all of us would say the goods and the binds would say marriage counseling is absolutely fine. Some for people, sure. yes. whether you are a believer or not, if you are, I would absolutely encourage you to find somebody who shares your same faith system because it is so much of those expectations. If you don't ever talk about them and you just get married, um, which happens, I think you help walk through a lot of those problems before you're even going to get, gonna get there, mm-hmm. or you know what to do a little better when it happens. And Will and I talk about all the time, our marriage counseling, our people, they ask us really hard questions, all yeah. those things. Like yeah. we had to talk about it and it helped us then mm-hmm. just not walk in one day where we're like, well, I thought you wanted to have, you know, Will's like, I want to have five kids. I'm like, I thought we were going to have one or none. <laughs> like, you know. Okay. That's important. Because Josh did say two, and I said three or four. Yeah. And so this is, can I, this yes, is fun. Yes, please do, yeah. So we got to, we had our two children, and Josh thought we were done. And I was praying <laughs> for a third. And it got to time, like two years later, and I was ready for a third, and Josh was not ready. And hmm. he said, I feel peace, we're done. And I said, well, I'm going to keep praying Okay, if, if it was God's will that he would bring us a third, however that may happen, however yeah. God wants to drop one in our lap. And that's literally... How I pray, <laughs> and um, those of you that know us yeah. know that um, many years later. So our age gap is how many years? Six. Mm-hmm. We have six years in between our number two child and our number three child, and it is because God ordained for us to have a little girl named Kaylin Faith that was adopted from China, mm-hmm. and so that is a big part of our story. And if anyone ever wants to learn more, I'd love to sit down and visit about yes. that. Mm-hmm. But that was a total God thing, how He worked that out in our lives. Um, and it was totally different than what we had thought how that would work. Um, and God had to work in both of our lives in order for us to get to the point yeah. to where adoption was a part of our story. So talk about that a little bit, because one of the, that was one of my questions, and you talked about it when you moved from your undergraduate, when you moved mm-hmm. to Texas, Texas mm-hmm. A&M, Senate, right? And then you've made several big life mm-hmm. changes, so having mm-hmm. kids, moving, all that. How do you guys just talk, walk us through kind of the process of how you guys work out big decisions mm-hmm. that are, I mean, they're really big life decisions that affect all of you or mm-hmm. your kids. How do you guys handle that? Yeah, life decisions, I think, have to be handled with a lot of prayer, mm-hmm. a lot of prayer, and and they also have to happen together. Yeah. There has to be a, you know, a mutual agreement that this is where God's calling us to move to, or this is a, a decision that God is calling us to do, whether it's mm-hmm. the adoption or having biological kids. And I think the as you go through life and certainly your marriage relationship, you go through various seasons. You go through a season, you know, that we didn't have kids and we were still in college. We go through a season where we're having new kids, where we're moving. And I think that the the biggest piece around that is continuing to stay in love, continuing to um, cover all the decisions in prayer, Mm -hmm. know that God's going to, going to protect you and his grace is going to be with you wherever you go Yeah, and continue to Lean into him. Lean yeah. into him. So, Katie, you kind of mentioned one with the kids, but do you have any other examples where there's something you have felt like you guys have needed to do and you haven't been on the same page? Can you just walk through? Because, again, I don't want to stereotype mm-hmm. things, but I feel like sometimes it kind of it yeah. seems like maybe the wife sometimes has mm-hmm. one thing, thinking one thing, and then... That's hard. What do it you do? It is hard. Yeah. Um, you pray about it, mm-hmm. and um, you pray and you talk about it, but I feel like at the end of the day, you are called to respect your husband mm-hmm. and fall under him and walk alongside him, whether you completely support his decision or not. Yeah. Um, but God will work it out, even mm-hmm. a tough tough decision or a light mm-hmm. decision. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm a pretty sp- strong personality, <laughs> and <laughs> Josh is shaking his head. You can't see. Uh, so that's hard for me because yeah. I, I think a lot of times I'm right mm-hmm. <laughs> because I'm a number one. God created me to be that way. Somebody um, has to be right, Katie. <laughs> yeah. It just might as well be you or me or some. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, so it's a lot of humbling yourself, right, Sarah, mm-hmm. and um, allowing God to do a work in your heart get you right where you're supposed to be. That's good. Okay. So this is a question that just came to me and this, I'm kind of put you on the spot a little bit. If there is someone listening and maybe one of them is a believer walking with the Lord and the other person is not, that can kind of change. Cause you just both said, Hey, we pray about things and that's Mm -hmm. great when you both 
mm-hmm. are in the same spot. So I guess it would be twofold. What would you tell somebody who's either spouse or part like significant other, their date, whatever, is not in the same place faith wise, or just and that's how I'd say either they're not a believer, don't share it, or they're just maybe not as far along in sure. the journey with that. What do you do? Okay, I would say if you are dating and you are not on the same page, um, mm-hmm. you you need to heed that very carefully. God mm-hmm. calls us to walk um, equally yoked, so mm-hmm. meaning you are on the same page in your belief system, in your yeah. faith, whatever. Yeah. So if you are dating someone that is not, I would not advise marriage because it's mm. It can change, but it's very hard, and it's going to make all of life hard. Now, if you are married to someone that is not a believer, lots of prayer. Mm -hmm. Not nagging, but prayer. And God can do amazing things. Um, For instance, my dad did not get baptized until the same day I was baptized. Mm -hmm. When I was 11 years old, my dad was baptized alongside me. And that comes from a lot of prayer and... um, Mm -hmm. Just mom being a quiet example for him to follow. He did grow up in a environment where his mom loved Jesus, but he just truly did not know Jesus until mm-hmm. later in his life. So keep praying, keep believing. God can do miraculous things, and He's an amazing man. That's yeah. good, Josh. Yeah. What would you add? Yeah, I w- well, I would say the the living by example mm-hmm. is something not to be underestimated. Yeah, and it's even in our marriage. We want our marriage to be an example mm-hmm. for others who are looking on. People are always watching. People mm-hmm. are always looking. People are wondering, especially your children, especially believers. Yeah. They're looking yeah. at you mm-hmm. and wanting to see how is he going to respond to this? Right. How are they going to react to that? Right. And so I think even in our even in our marriage as a married couple, to use that as an example to Definitely. to others. Mm-hmm. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a few other random questions. I got to ask some of our listener friends some questions like, what would they ask somebody who's been married at certain age intervals? And so we got, some good, we got some good stuff. So here's one. This is a good one. Okay, so we're just going to hit it real hard. Is marriage worth it? Is Definitely. It worth it? 100%. Okay, you got to tell me more than that. Why? Give me one more. Because <laughs> I think this is this is a single per you know, like Because going. marriage was designed by God. Yes. And marriage is a tool that God uses to bring glory and honor to Him. Yes. So it is a hundred percent worth it. Okay. And it becomes your life partner, um, one someone that is there for you no matter what. And I do believe that. And he, Josh um, and I, I feel like encourage each other well. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. it's beautiful in a relationship. God always allows it to where when He is down, I am generally up and can pull Him back up. And mm-hmm. when I am down, He can pull me back up. And so someone that's just constantly there cheering you along in everything you do. That's well good. Said. It's important. Well said. I love it. Okay, here's another one. How do you keep the fire going after so many years <laughs> together and kids? That's a good, I mean, you're 20 That's a years great in. Question. Yeah. That's a long time to be with somebody. Mm-hmm. Things have changed. <laughs> yeah, and we've talked about this before. You have to keep things fresh and new. Yeah. And so, um, what was it just the other day we were talking about and saying, we've never done that before. We should try to do it. What was, was it? Scuba diving, but I don't want to oh. try. Well, no. yeah. <laughs> Snorkeling was good enough. Well, <laughs> sorry, Josh. You're not going to get that. <laughs> Pray about that and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now, gotcha. oh, um, I think, girls, go on a date and get dressed up. Look yeah. pretty for your husband. Put on some lipstick and get out of your yoga pants and dress yeah. up a little bit for your husband. They enjoy. They they love how you look no matter what. But yes. I think it's it's nice to get dressed up every once and every once in a while and go on a nice hot date and yeah mm-hmm. um yeah. What do you wish Josh would do to keep, like, what would, what do you tell him to say? Like, cause you don't have to tell him, go put on some makeup, Josh. <laughs> like, what would you, I mean, what is it? <laughs> get the babysitter for me and make all the arrangements so I don't have to think about that. That's plan the good. date. Yeah. Yeah. Plan the date. A little mm-hmm. planning goes a long way. It, it doesn't does. have to be a huge thing, right? No. Just shows some initiative and thought. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's huge. Yes. That's right. Mm-hmm. Acts of service. I love yes. it. Okay. So here's a great one. What advice, so for our friends listening that we said that are, you know, not married yet, single dating, what is just some advice that you would give them for the season they're in right now while they're just either waiting? And and sometimes we we think, and so 
all of our single friends, I want you to hear me say something. Yeah. It is not wrong for you to be single. And I don't, I think there is a false perspective that says that you just, you're just always waiting for that relationship. Our culture, even though it's shifted some still kind of tells us that your life is only, only a man or a woman is going to complete you. Um, and that's not true. Only Jesus is going to complete you. Um, yep. but that's hard. But when you're waiting, especially if that desires in your heart. So can you guys just speak to that a little bit? What would you say to people who are just hanging, hanging out, whether they're young or older or whatever? Um, I would say you, you pray. And if your desire is to be married, you pray Mm -hmm. for God to bring that right person to you and then don't compromise. Mm -hmm. When you know the people or the Quali- the characteristics that you want in that man or woman, yeah. don't compromise. Stick yeah. to the things God knows that you desire for your heart. Yeah, li- living your life with someone for the rest of your life, not something you want to settle on. Yeah. Don't yeah. don't settle for yeah. you know rushing into it if that's mm-hmm, a, mm-hmm. a strong desire in your heart. Really, really make sure that it's the right one because it's, it's someone you're going to wake up next to for the rest of your life. And go in <laughs> to marriage. Assuming you're going to be married to them till the day that yeah. you move on. Yeah. Okay. There, that's good. It's one one thing that Katie and I have had from the very beginning. We we don't even use the the D, D, word. The D word. That's how we say it. Yep. <laughs> Around yep. our no. house, it, yep. it never comes up in conversation. Yeah. It's not even an option. Yep. And you have to have that kind of very mindset. firm mindset that it's not even an option. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. That was one of the questions that somebody asked: Is mm-hmm. what. It, is divorce ever an option and how do you work through that? So you just, it's not, not. an option. It's not. Okay. Hold on. I'm looking at my questions. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. What was your last fight about? <laughs> how did you get over it? <laughs> if you can share, can you, if it's. <laughs> so looking at each other back and forth, <laughs> trying to decide who's going <laughs> to, which story do you want to tell? <laughs> No one's perfect and everyone's going to have fights. It's yes. just trying to work through it in the best manner possible with love. <laughs> Remembering you do still love yes. that person as you work through it and talking about it. So I'll I'll preface this by saying we honestly, we don't fight a lot. Yeah. And certainly we've learned to not let it escalate to the point where we're like really at each other. Mm-hmm. But I will say if... If we're talking about some of the times we fight, it's typically either early in the morning, because okay. I, am, I am not a morning person, but I'm forced to get up early because of work, or it's late at night because Katie I love hits to sleep. the pillow and she's asleep. And, I and am, he wakes me up. Oh, gosh. That is so, a wrong move. Right, there you I go. know enough to know that's not a good and idea. So that's where of, the fight's coming from. <laughs> yeah. So one of the, one of the recent <laughs> fights that we had was I had to get up early. And I knew Katie was still asleep, mm-hmm. and I had to get into the closet. Oh no! To get flipped on the light to get something to wear, but I closed the door, like <laughs> barely cracked open the door, turned the light on to kind of reach in and grab a shirt. <laughs> and she says, "My eyes! That light's right in my eyes!" And I took it offensive, and I'm like, "Well, I'm trying. I mean, how else am I supposed to get my and shirt?" Then, guess what this happened there? He slammed the door, wakes up the whole household. <laughs> There we go. I love it. So how do we work? Josh, how did you? Yeah, I appreciate you guys being real about this. We're not trying to call you out because you worked it through. You're still sitting here. They don't look angry at each other. You made up, and things happen. It just it's life. Life happens, and yeah, I I did apologize. I did. I said I'm I'm sorry for the way that I responded this morning. I was like, you know that I wasn't doing it on purpose. It wasn't intentional, and I'm sorry. Yes, that's He's, He's really good about. Saying he's sorry, I have to work Katie, on it. Would, would you like? Because I was gonna say, I mean, I feels like that sounds a little Josh. Like you, you were apologizing for something that you probably didn't really feel like you did wrong. You were trying to do a thing, and sometimes that is not false humility. That just sometimes yeah. it's like, hey, if that hurts your feelings, I can be the bigger person and say I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, Katie, you and I are a little more similar personality where. <laughs> Sorry is just not an easy thing because we are right most of the time. And if you're right most of the time, why would you have a reason to apologize? I have to not... work on that a lot, yeah, Sarah. Yeah, so how, how are you working on that, friend? Can you help your friend? I'm who's... still working on that, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't turn on the light in my oh, eyes. Sad. I need that, an extra 15 minutes of sleep. <laughs> so can we you think through it. of a time where you've had to say sorry, Katie? Would oh, you like to refresh yes. one? Would you like to share a moment with us? Uh, yes, please. Let's I, go, I can't let's go think. There. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I love putting them on the spot. They're like, really, really they're like, later we're going to get Sarah back from. This is not fair. She asked us all these questions. It's good. I like it. Okay. Well, guys, like the time goes so quick. Do you have just any other, I've got a couple of little questions, but do you have anything else that you just want to share on the topic of marriage or something we didn't hit that you would love to just kind of share after being I married say, 20 years? Like, um, a couple of things we do try to do is when he was commuting 45 mm-hmm. minutes or so, um, he would try to give me a call or a check-in on his yeah. way home just yeah. so he and I could both verbalize a little bit. Good. What the thermostat was, how things That's were at the good, house, what exactly. was going on before yep. he walked in and was slammed by three kids and his wife that was in a grumpy mood. So yeah. just, you know, to get on the same page, to hear a quick That's bit a good. about. And so that's a just a quick little tidbit of help. Um, also, we do try to check in with each other during the day. We send a lot of texts during the day, even if it's just that's a quick, good. hey, how was your meeting? Or I'm praying for you. Um, a little note of encouragement or a quick picture just as a fun memory. And we do that pretty regularly just to stay with each other throughout the day. Um, anything else? No, I, I think that's good. It's mm-hmm. really important because if I'm coming home to something that I'm not expecting. Mm -hmm. If I'm coming home and I've had a great day Mm -hmm. and then I walk in and Katie has not had a great day. Yeah. At least the check-in before I get home gets me a, gets me a, in the better. Yes. Mindset. Mindset for what, for what, what I'm stepping into. Yes. It's crazy because kids can lose it about five minutes before. It could be a great yeah. day, and then all mm-hmm. of a sudden, literally 10 minutes before dad comes home, it's like yeah. everybody's lost their mind, and it ruins the whole entire day. Yes. Yes. How does they do that, Katie? I don't understand. <laughs> it happens. God it love kids. That's a, <laughs> that's a whole other topic, Sarah. Yes. That is, that's <laughs> do another a parenting episode. podcast. We'll, do, we'll bring it back for that. Yes. Do you have it? Katie, you are a reader. You guys are both readers, learners. Do you mm-hmm. have any like just books or resources or podcasts or things that you listen to specifically to marriage or? that you would recommend to our friends listening? I like Focus on the Family. Do, okay, do some yeah. good marriage podcasts. Those are um, really good podcasts. I listened to a new one I've just recently found. I'll have to, Rooted in Faith, I believe it is called, and it's a husband and a wife. Yep. Okay. Ruth Schwenk, and I, I don't remember his name, but it's a great new, it's a marriage one I just recently started following that I like. Yeah. I I read... Most of my reading is around leadership books, or yes. if I'm doing podcasts, it's around leadership podcasts. But I take it from the angle of how can I lead my family better? That's how good. can I lead Katie, our kids, in yeah. addition to this, the leadership qualities I'm looking for in a in a work environment? That's great. And I think wives really enjoy when their husbands are able to lead and take yes. some initiative in that area. Mm-hmm. So let me ask that. Just talk about... Um, we are believers. We mm-hmm. love Jesus. We serve him. You guys have done that, dedicated mm-hmm. your lives to doing that in different areas of your life. Well, your whole life, but mm-hmm. it comes out in different ways. How do you guys do that in your... We just talk about, do you guys That's read a good the question. Bible together? Do you mm-hmm. guys pray together? That is one of the biggest things I know we get asked a lot about. Mm-hmm. What What do you guys do to kind of keep faith central in your marriage and in your family? So I'll, I'm going to maybe take a step back in time and give mm-hmm. you an, a, give you a, one of my personal biggest convictions okay good that okay. I've ever I've ever experienced we were living in Tennessee mm-hmm. and Katie had told me that she was actually going to step down mm-hmm. from some of the Bible study work she was doing and the ministry work she was doing so that I could step up to be the spiritual leader of the of okay. the household. Okay. And that conviction of that I had of how how horrible is that of me that I've got a wife that sets the bar really high, but I she's gonna have to, you know, she's wanting to come down so that she can respect that I need to be the spiritual leader mm-hmm. of, of the household. Mm-hmm. And I've actually thought about this honestly here recently of yeah. how do you manage being the spiritual head of the household to a wife that's in full-time ministry. Yeah, that's hard, Josh. That's that a, are that's, strong leader personalities. It yeah. Hard. It's a yep. big weight mm-hmm. on my shoulders, a yeah. big responsibility for my shoulders. And sometimes, honestly, just being the head of the household doesn't mean that I can't, you know, push her forward and support her mm-hmm. and step out of her way. Yep. And yep. let her continue to run as as yeah. much as she can. But 
Okay, so I want to ask you more about this, but I want to ask a question because I want to clarify. When you say head of the household, can you kind of tell me more of what you don't mean? Because I think in marriage, mm-hmm. sometimes, especially in Christian circles, yeah. you'll hear the word submit and that gets a bad rap. But can you just talk about when you're talking about, hey, being the head of the house, leading in your home, what does that mean to you, Josh? Yeah, for me, it, it simply means, it, I like the team aspect you were talking about yeah. earlier. We, like we... We we say we're team Bynum all the time. Like we're yeah. all in this together. Kaylin, yes. our little one will tell you, I'm on the Bynum team. <laughs> we're Love all, it. We're Love all it. in this together. But I think being the head of the household is it's my responsibility to ensure that our household is bringing our kids up in a godly mm-hmm. manner. Mm-hmm. That we're ensuring that they understand that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. Yeah. yeah. And that we're working on this together. Yeah. So... Ahead, what Kate. it yeah. does mean for me sometimes is to allow him the opportunity mm-hmm. to pray at dinner or to allow him the opportunity to have those devotional times at night and me not to just jump in and do it because he's more than willing if yeah. I will <laughs> allow him to. Um, I've also learned like with parenting, I say, go ask your father. That's <laughs> Let good. him make some of the parenting decisions yeah. when he is around or... Um, let them know we are on the same team. It's not just mom. Yeah. It's dad and then too. I say, well, what do you think? <laughs> what do you yeah. think? There you go. <laughs> well, and that's, but that's you know, okay too. Yes. Just so he does yeah. have some yeah. say in all of Well, that. Josh, you really hit on something, and this could be a whole nother podcast episode. Could yeah. you just talk a little more to the guys listening? Because what they don't know is on the front end, I'm going to come on, I'm going to tell all of them that I think they should grab there if they are married and they're listening or whatever, just grab somebody else and listen to this with them together. Not in a like, hey honey, I need you to listen to this and figure all the ways you need to fix yourself. That is not what we want you to do because mm-hmm. it's not your job to fix a spouse. Let's just be we're on a team together. So we want to encourage and love them through things that we can both be doing. Cause usually it's both of us yes. too, right, Katie? We've got things we need to work on too. <laughs> But Josh, can you talk to the guys? Like, what what does that look like right now for you to kind of be leading more? What are some things that you are doing in your guys' home to do that and kind of step up the game in that area? Yeah, I'd say the the first thing that I do is I I pray for Katie. Hmm. I it, we you know it's not there's one thing to pray together. Mm-hmm. There's a whole other thing for in your own quiet time. Yeah, that you're praying for your spouse and you're praying for them to hear from God and you're yeah. praying for them in their parenting as a mom you're you're praying yeah. for them in their ministries and the work that they're doing that you're that's step 1 is yeah. truly get into prayer for your wife it's good the other i think piece is continuing to support her continuing mm-hmm. to support my kids mm-hmm. and leading by example yeah being an example to my kids of how my faith is growing, mm-hmm. being an example to my kids on how I'm going to respond in certain situations yeah, is one of the best ways that I can lead is he simply by example. He also is very good at like talking to the kids about respecting me. Mm-hmm. Like You will respect your mom. You will not talk to her that way. We, this is not how we treat our mother. Yeah, a lot That's of good. times I won't even say your mom. When I'm talking about Katie and respect, yes. I'll say you don't talk to my, my wife, wife yes. that way, mm-hmm. even though it's my it's my own kid. Yeah. Because no one's going to disrespect my wife. Yes including in my own household. I think that's huge. Will says that a lot, and our kids always like... they It's serious. They take, yes, because they're like, he just said wife, not mom, and they know that there's something a little yep. different of like... That's true. I think that's great. Yep. Well, guys, this has been a lot of fun. I know there's there's so many more things I want to ask. Ready but to be done, Sarah. <laughs> I know. We're going to have to do a part two. But so the show is called Now That's Something Good. So you guys have already shared so many good things, but do you have just like what's going on in each of your guys' life that just be something good? There's no... It can be anything. I don't ever want to preface it for people. So I'm like, just whatever seems good to you. Share something good. That's well, so I'll, hard. There is so many good things. I know. Yeah, I'll say 20 years of marriage is good. Mm-hmm. And that's still fresh. We're in our 20th year. But I'll also say it's Super Bowl weekend. That's true. And so you guys are football. that's something good. I'm excited about okay, that. That's good. That's fair. I like it, Josh. Katie? This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. You should sing. You sing better than me. No, I'm not. You will rejoice. You gotta rejoice in the day. So my mom used to wake me up singing that song as she would open the blinds, and then I, I try it. to do it now to my son, especially my 13 year old. And I get in trouble for just flipping good. the closet light on. It is good. This is the day the Lord had made, and there's always something we can rejoice and be glad in, and that is something good, Sarah. That is something good. Josh, Katie, thank you so much for being here with us today. It's been great. Can we let our friends follow you on like 
social media? <laughs> Can we tell them where you, you where you reside? Yes. Okay. You perfect. may find me on both Insta and Facebook, and you will not find Joshua. You, you will can not find me in a text no string if in I give text. you my phone number. But other than that, yes, That's please. Good. I'll find Katie. We'll get you connected to Katie, and yes. you can connect with them both. Awesome. Thank you guys for being here today. Thank, Thank you, you for Sarah. having us, Sarah and Will. It was our pleasure. Thank you so much for listening to this conversation today with our friends, Josh and Katie. I know I was really encouraged by just hearing uh, parts of their story, things I'd never heard. We've been friends with Josh and Katie for a while and they shared stories I never knew. We're going to make sure, make sure to follow all our social media pages so you can see some of the pictures that we talked about. And I'm going to work really hard to see if I can get a video of them doing the two step because I promise that'll be 30 seconds of your life that you'll want to have. You'll want to see that. Hey, make sure to check out the show notes. We're going to share some resources there that are great for Um, dating relationships, marriage, just relationships in general. There's some movies, some books, some different things that we're going to link. And we'd love to encourage you to go check that out and do this friend. Would you take a moment? If this episode was encouraging to you, would you go share it with somebody else? Maybe you've got a parent, a friend, a brother, a sister, I don't know, someone that you could share today's episode with. That would mean a lot to us. And it continues just to help us get good news and something good out there and share stories and conversations along the way. Again, I hope you guys have a great week. Take some time and go share something good with someone around you.